Well, first credit to Ohio State. <clears throat> they uh, they made the, the drive in the fourth quarter, made the plays on defense they needed to do to win the game. Um, I just have to be very careful with what I say because <laughs> people take things I say and um, sometimes hear something else because my wife tells me I don't communicate the best sometimes, so I have to make sure I say this the right way. As you go through this, the hardest part of what we did when we went to Temple and what we did when we went to Baylor was getting guys not to say, oh, here we go again, and getting guys not to expect to lose, um, getting everyone, including the people around the program, not to focus on always on what's wrong but what's right, right? And that's hard, right? You're constantly talking to your staff, your coaches, your players. Last week was a low for, for, for us since we've been here. Um, because the minute the game got hard, we kind of looked around like, oh, no, what's happening to us? Um, kind of like a, kind of victims, like, yeah, this is happening to us. And this was a hard week. This was a hard week. But a week that I knew, because of my experiences, we would turn into something good. We would teach. The players would see us. Instead of us being defensive as things are said, they would see us stand like men. You know, anyone can, anyone can just be defensive. Like just stand like men in front of them, not blame the players, but work hand in hand with them. And we expected to come here and win the football game. We expected to win. And so I say this, to me, it's so hard because you don't want it to be, it sound like a moral victory because we lost and we're not here to lose. We're the University of Nebraska. We're not here to lose. But in terms of the development and growth of what you're trying to build, because while the world and everyone wants things to happen quickly, if you want it to be sustainable, if you want it to, be, to last forever, you, you have to do it the right way. I get asked a lot of questions about, you know, why aren't we doing it this way, that, that way. We're trying to build something sustainable. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, who knows, you know. A lot of you guys have seen a lot of guys come here try to do it and it hasn't worked. So I'm trying it a different way. I was proud of that football team today. I was proud. They didn't back down. They had some really tough breaks. They had some things really go against them, even the way we started. And they competed. It's the first time, it's the first time, it's the first time since I've been here that I felt a championship mindset in the locker room. Along with the championship mindset, as, as those who compete know, comes utter disappointment when you lose. So that part's hard. It's hard for the guys. But I saw a group of guys, you know, even at the very end, take the field, going out there to make one more play, have a chance to compete against one of the best teams in the country. So I thought they grew up. I challenged them. It better look this way next week. Some of the football still is tough. It's hard. You know, you're literally, you know, you can have some of our administrators that hear me on the field. I'm still, you know, you got some young guys out there. You're still coaching things out there in the middle of the game that in a year or two you, you hope that it's, it's second nature. It's just what it is. But for those of us, for those of us who believe in the long way, the hard way, for those of us who haven't had things handed to us, for those of us who believe in building, for those people who believe in putting in an honest day's work, like I hope, I hope, I hope while they're disappointed, they're proud of what they saw, of what they competed. And while I yelled at the officials sometimes and all that, our players didn't let it bother them. Our players just continued to beat, to compete. I thought we played with class and dignity. We had a chance to win. So I know that's long. I know it's hard. I don't say that to justify what we're doing. I'm saying that so our players, so our players will understand why I'm so proud. Not, not satisfied. That's very, very, very important. There are no moral victories. But proud. But proud. With that, I'll take what questions you guys have. Uh, I thought our defense um, was dominant all day. Save three plays, you know, take away three plays. You know, I think um, I think uh, on the first one, you know, we were playing a little three down and we took advantage of it. Tony did such a nice job. We, we kind of recognized pretty early we, we were going to be able to rush the passer, so he went to back to four down. Um, the second one, you know, kind of a condensed set check, and, and they just, you know, Jeremiah is a really, really good player. He ran, he ran by us, and, you know, just a nice play by them. Just, oh, they made a play, right? 
Um, and then, and then really the third one, they just kind of ran a double move out and up and just caught us in, uh, caught us in the zone coverage where you need someone just to make a great play. We just, you know, we didn't see it. But on those three plays, I think that was probably as good a defense as I've seen, you know, um, for most of the day. I thought we tackled well, we handled the run, we won on the perimeter, we hit the quarterback. I think, the, you know, I, my eyes aren't very good, so I, it's hard. I don't know what the third down numbers were, but I thought we were excellent on third down, including some one for ten, some, some third and ones and third and twos, a fourth and one stop. So, um, you know, we won, won, won well, until the last play, we won the turnover battle with, with Matt Malcolm's great pick. So, um, you know, I don't think it was anything special. They have a great run game. Chips, chips. you know, they've got great players, got a great coach. Um, I think our guys just played really well, played physical, um, played hard, got off blocks. We didn't, we didn't do anything real special today. Yeah, I think um, you have the ball down there. You need to score a touchdown. Um, you know, I can I can only really probably talk about the last one. You know, we 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 had him set up to run the speed sweep. We thought we'd get in. You know, uh, when Jalen went down, we thought Jalen went down inside the one. You know, as as the official came out, he's coming down like on the one yard line, and then that, as he runs out, you know, that's, that's how you spot balls, right? Kind of goes to the two. We lost Barrett, our fullback, last week, so we had to use defensive players. So. We send them out, thinking the ball's in the one, as the ball gets respotted back to the two. And you probably saw me pretty animated about it. Now you're calling that play from the one and a half, you know, two yard line. I think the same thing play happened right before the half, right? Like we thought we had a first down, so then we had to, you know, burn it. So, um, you know, and I don't, I'm not complaining about the officiating. I'm just telling you the impact. And when you're on the road in this environment with the, the noise and all the things that are happening, credit to the Ohio State fans. What a great environment. I mean, the red coats. From the minute you get here, they're nice and friendly to you, and the game starts, and they're here to they're here to make that hard. Um, you know, a ball you think spotted somewhere that gets moved back really affects the play calls that you have. I I, I do think you know it's it, you can't it's hard in life. You know, I mean, they have to find you know at the end when you look at the results, if they don't work, they don't work. But you're also saying to yourself the best things we did today were also Dante on some big runs. You know, and so. You know, if you want to run the ball, you have to sometimes be willing to have a two yard gain, a three yard gain, which sets up now a ball outside, which which we thought maybe Jay Lloyd would score on. And if not, we said, we'll get the ball down inside the one and we'll pound it. If it's fourth and three, then we'll throw the ball in. I uh, just the, think the spot got us. And, and again, I didn't want to use a timeout there in the second half. Maybe I should have. Um, but, uh, you know, I knew we, I knew they game come down the end. We need the timeouts. And the other thought process being, you know, if, we, if we run the ball, if we pound it in there, we run the ball at the one, you know, score. The, if, if we don't get it, we'll get the ball right back, which we did. And um, that's kind of the thought process down there. Matt, can, you, can you detail that, that championship? Um, I think I've been pretty consistent in saying, you know, to you guys, I think the guys do a great job during the week. It's getting to these moments and saying, here we go again. I'm just, you know, again, I, I don't want anyone to take anything I say the wrong way because everything I say is with peace and love. But when they haven't won and then the commentary around them is always pretty like, hey, you, this isn't good enough. They, they're in a culture where all they hear is like, this isn't good enough. And so how do you get them through that? You push them through that. You push them through that. It's just what it is. Like You push them through that. And um, so we always work hard. The guy, I've never had a time where I thought the guys didn't work hard. But I thought they went out there. I mean, the game couldn't have started any worse. I mean, it's like, holy smokes. And the defense took the field, like last year, and said, let's go get a stop. They got a stop. Um, but I, I thought it was before the game, and I thought it was at halftime. Really, at halftime, I told them. Because last week, I said some different things to them at halftime. <laughs> and this week at halftime, I said, this is, this is what it's supposed to look like. I. If I start worrying about the results only, you know, and you had a coach, you had you had Coach Osborne, who all he talked about was the process and not the results. I mean, everybody knows what it's supposed to look like. Coach Osborne taught us. <laughs> he showed us. Like, worry about the process. And so, to me, the way it felt at halftime was the process. Like, they were excited to get back out there and play. They were not like, oh, man, you know, I can't believe they, you know, we got, I can't believe they called OPI, offensive pass interference on that. You know, they weren't worried about that which a lot of times our guys have worried about. And you always got me saying, like, just play. What's next? Just play. What's next? And so I, I felt like a lot of the things we talk about took hold today. And um, um, 
that to me is like that to me is something I you know like I feel relieved. Um, I, I feel despondent that we lost the game. I thought we were going to win the game. I feel I feel mm -hmm. beat up for the guys. Um, but you know I, I know when I say these things, a lot of people are probably going to take them the wrong way. I also know like across the country, I, I tell Troy like I got college coaches who text me sometimes like Hey, okay, Matt, I listen to your press conferences every week because I'm really honestly doing my best for people who want to hear it, not pick it apart, but want to hear it, trying to, just trying to give everyone a step-by-step -step picture of what we're trying to do. It's easy to pick apart. Um, but like, I'm just trying to like lay it out there for people who love coaching and love kids. Do you know how hard it is to like come up here every week and, and, and talk about what went wrong without ever, without ever making a kid look bad? Like, I listen to coaches all the time talk about, we, we got to execute. That means, you, that means your players aren't very good. <laughs> when coaches say we just got to execute better, they're throwing it on the kids. And just, you know, we stand up here and we try so hard to give everyone a true picture. Because one thing I love about Nebraska fans is they love football. They want to know the hows, the whats, the whys. And I listen to the people I trust. Like, I, I called Coach Osborne on Sunday. I said, Coach, you got five minutes for me? <laughs> what do you think? Coach Osborne and Coach Solis came to practice on Tuesday. Coach, you know? And um, the old things are the, are the real things, are the good things. And so I'm only saying this now because I want our players, I want our players, if they just listen to this press conference, to know how truly, truly, truly excited I was to be in that locker room with them. I didn't have to be a cheerleader today. I didn't have to be like, come on, you can do this. Like, they were like, get out of the way. And we've had moments like that. That was 60 minutes of that today. You know, Dylan went into the tent before the last drive. I'm like, hey, Heine, you know, get ready to go. And Dylan comes back out, he's like, let's go. And you know, he didn't, Dylan didn't, didn't want to just be in the game. He wanted to go win the game, right? And uh, um, it got really, really, really loud. You know, so we had the false start, then we don't miss a play, you know. But, um, so the football will get better. The football will continue to get better. But make no mistake, the hardest thing is, 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 is building a culture of championship caliber expectations without winning. There's a lot of guys that have taken a lot of jobs that are already winning and they keep it going. I should probably try that sometime. But this to me, this to me is why the Lord put me on this earth. <laughs> like to work with young people and to have them raise their expectations. And it's why these guys are here. I mean, that's Dylan, Ja'Cory, they could have gone somewhere where they were already winning. They came here to build it. So I'm proud of them. And I say all this because I hope, I hope fans are disappointed, but I hope they're proud of them. Now, if we don't do it again next week, Mitch, to your point, if we go out there next week and we're front runners again, then we, it was all for naught. Like this is a step and it has to be where we are now that we play this way every week. Yeah, football has to be better, but anyway, my take. Well, I'm so fired up for him. And again, on the same vein, on the same point, because even last week, you know, I think Mitch asked me, like, hey, did you not kick it because of, you know, I said, hey, I think he's going to make these kicks. And it was a great question. I'm not saying that, Mitch, to you, please. I think it's, it's the right question, right? But if you go back to my answers, I was like, hey, I think, he, I think he's going to be a great kicker someday. I mean, I've said that on record. Like, I think he's going to be a great kicker someday. It's just, I mean, things take time. But now you have him for what? How many years do you have him for? Him for four years? So you have that kid who makes those kicks. In those moments, like, if you want to know why I feel fulfilled, not, not satisfied, but fulfilled, it's because if you go back to my press conference a couple weeks ago, I told him, I said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, man. Like, you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But in this program, you don't have to walk there alone, right? Like, you, like, you walk there arm in arm with the guys. Like, every day he kicks field goals. You know who's standing right next to him cheering him on? Ja'Cory. <laughs> Ja'Cory. Screaming. That's our starting with freshman wideout. Screaming. And uh, he made those kicks. I mean, I was like, man. I, Mar Mar I said to Mar before the game, like, hey, if it's a long kick, should I put him out there as confidence? Brett was like, don't worry about his confidence. Put him out there. So I think, uh, I think some of our guys are, I think some of our guys are really getting, be getting better. I'll answer them all today. I'll answer them all day. I spent a lot of time uh, philosophizing. They have, have some football questions. Yeah, you know, and you know, you go back last week. I don't, I don't. It's gonna sound weird. I don't know that like the guys didn't, weren't willing to be physical. We were just really out of whack. Like we were expecting one type of game, and it was another type of game. Now we didn't tackle well. Today, um, today, I think the guys squeezed blocks and, and ran to the ball together. And you know, sometimes you give up. You know, you're playing really good run defense like that, and all of a sudden you give up a a, a big play, and all of a sudden guys start to panic a little bit. But they didn't. Um, and we played a lot of guys. You know, we didn't have Tommy today. Um, and Sierra played. Malcolm moved to corner for us. 
Malcolm played corner. You know, Keys played safety. Deshaun played safety. Jeremiah finished the game at corner when Malcolm went down. So, um, yeah, I mean, we want to be a physical team. We wanted to be the most physical team on the field today. We wanted to win the uh, turnover battle. We wanted to have a culture of execution, do our job. But, I was gonna say, but more importantly, we wanted to be the more physical team. That, that's a physical team too. Like they, they play defense, and you know, one of the tough things we're going on is four straight games of us going into a team off a bye. A team off a bye has two weeks to study you, two weeks to prepare for you. So we came out early on, you know, corners over man, and they they run to cover two, and so we lose a play there. And Dylan did a great job. The little things Dylan does, you know, no one will see, but did a good job of getting us in the right plays after a while. I'm sorry, Brian. How would, how would you sum up the last uh, offensive series that you mentioned, Dylan? You know, if you're going to have him, maybe, and it was chaotic, and it was breaking the action, while they were figuring out the penalty and all that stuff. Well, it was a break in the action too, because you know they, they told us to come in the middle middle of the field because they were throwing bottles, yeah. right? Like, I mean, like let's talk about you know. And that was that was you know there's, there's water bottles. I, mean, I don't. I'm not. Hey, trust me. I'm all for all. I'm from Philly. I'm, I'm all for all of that. Like I mean, <laughs> that doesn't bother me. I just got the guys in the middle. So let's go. But um, you know we uh, we um, we um, had the penalty right, and um, there's three three forty five left. And so you know we always expect something good to happen. So really in those situations you're trying. We call it last shot. You're trying to get the ball with a two minute warning, so that they don't have an opportunity to go back and answer. Like you're either going to win that. You're going to win that on a game winning buzzer beater. At the end of the game, go down there and throw a touchdown and give them 17 seconds left or not. So that happened. You know, we ran the uh, we ran the screen play and we just we just we just missed the block on the man to man defender. You know, we we have them. We just missed the block on the man to man defender. Uh, come back. You know, they're being pretty exotic there. I didn't see you know the last plays. We're pushing the ball down the field. I didn't see exactly what happened on that last play. But um, you know, th these are great reps for Dylan. You know, I mean, I, I know he wanted to win. These are great reps for Gunner. These are great reps for Jacory. You know, a lot of those guys like you know. I thought Isaiah Nayor today showed up and played probably one of his best games. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'll have to see exactly. I mean, they've, got, they've got quite a pass rush. They've got great players on defense. And, um, you know, I thought we hung in there, though, you know, on those plays. They got us some zero the one time in the red zone. That was a really difficult because we would have kicked a field goal there, and that might have changed the game. Um, and we, we caught a ball to try to get the ball out of his hands, and they just brought more than we could block and, you know, didn't get it off. So we, we had some other opportunities that we just have to keep working on. Of the screen game, um, I thought uh, I thought today I have to I thought today um, we thought because of their pass rush we'd really have to screen them because they're, they're they've typically historically been a four man rush team with Larry Johnson. Um, they brought a lot more pressures today, and so sometimes the dropping ends. I think so. I think we had one early that we liked, but other than that, you know, I, I think early in the game we said, hey, let's let's get out of this out of the screen game. It's just more of a zone blitz pressure game. Um, and then you know the one at the end, it's it's first and eight for 15 or whatever it was, and uh, um, we went to a man beater and just didn't make the block, you know. So um, wasn't good enough probably today. The fo that part of the f football was definitely not good enough. The screen game. You talked about the championship attitude in the locker room. You're the first team to score in Ohio State in the third quarter. In fact, you outscored them three nothing. Um, was that attitude? Was there some key adjustments that you made? What was your success there? Um, you know, I thought we found some runs in the third quarter. You know, we ran a couple um, wham trap plays. You know, we, we wham the three technique and Dante, you know, Dante uh, close to splitting one. You know, he looked like he was about to go for 80 and the guy came and tackled him around the ankles. So I thought we got the run game going there. And, um, you know, we, we punted the ball down. You know, then we got the pick. You know, so we, we played on their side of the 50. Um, you know, we look back at the game just from a football perspective. You know, you have to, you have to make more of those opportunities, whether it's the goal line plays that Sam talked about or or not kick, always kicking field goals, but scoring some more touchdowns. Um, you know that that um, that was part of it. But um, I mean, again, they have a great, great, great defense. Um, you know, but our kids made some plays to, to hang in there, and stay with it. Um, yeah. So it was third and eleven. So I wanted to call timeout because you want to get the ball back and save forty seconds. Then you know the guy went down. So I just said, hey, do I get that timeout back? You know, because. Every crew's a little different. Sometimes they'll give you that timeout back. Um, I wanted it back. I didn't get it back. And then I would, you know, and then, and then, you know, we had that situation where the targeting plus the catch. And then I was watching. I saw, you know, I saw Coach Day, you know, out there at the numbers, and they threw 15 on him. So then when they unthrew the 15, I was just confused, right? I didn't, I'm trying to figure out where the ball's at. So a lot of these, you know, it's just so loud out there. Sometimes, you, it, you know, it looks like you're like this. You know, I had him come over because I don't. You think the ball's going to be at the 35-yard line, you're calling a different play than if the ball's at the 50 or the ball's at the minus 45. So 
you know, if a flag's thrown, I can't hear. When they say, like, hey, uh, you know, that I can't hear what's being said. So, um, so I was just trying to figure out what happened. There were unique circumstances, right? Like, they said they had us come out. They said, hey, bring your team off the sideline. That wasn't me trying to motivate the guys. That was me like, hey, guys, put your helmets on. <laughs> Something might hit you. So, uh, uh, but again, at the end of the day, uh, credit to Ohio State. They made plays. They made the play. They made the drive to go down there and win. And uh, their defense made, you know, one more play than we did. And um, But we'll be back. I don't know that. I don't. They, they say he was in the tent. I, someone. I don't know if he got hit on the shoulder or something. I, I'm not sure exactly. Anybody? All right. Thank you.